Welcome to an unbagging from theplayersaid.com. My name is Grant. Haven't done one of these for a while, it seems, but today I'm taking a look at uh, the fifth game in the Battle of the Seven Days or Blood in Richmond, Blood Before Richmond series from Tiny Battle Publishing, Malvern Hill. This is the final battle highlighted in these games uh, in this period of the Seven Days Battle in June of 1862 between McClellan and Robert E. Lee during the American Civil War. Uh, this game is designed by Tom Russell. Uh, there you can see that on the bag itself. And you might be asking yourself, why is this game designed by Tom Russell coming out with Tiny, Tiny Battle Publishing when Tom has created Holland Spiel? Well, well, the simple answer to that is, prior to Holland Spiel's creation a couple of years ago, Tom designed these games and actually licensed all, licensed all five of them to Tiny Battle Publishing. So most recently, this game was published. I think I received this about a week ago, and I'm just getting around uh, to opening it up. So it is a uh, polybag game. It's a fairly simple-looking uh, game. Sorry, I struggle getting these things out of the bags. I always do, uh, but there you go. You can see the uh, front cover doubles as the rule book. So there you get a close-up look uh, designed by Tom Russell. The rules are not very complex. Total page count is 10, and you can see this last page literally is just uh, the credits. Um, as well as the final part of a gunboat, gunboat table, which is pretty interesting. But the rules are not very complex or deep. I actually read over these the other day, trying to get a feel for the game. I'd like to try this solo uh, at first, and then Alexander and I will give it a play. Uh, but here, in the introduction, it talks about the game. Blood Before Richmond series is designed as a medium complexity two-player game. And once again, George McClellan, Robert E. Lee in June of 1862. This final battle of that campaign was fought at Malvern Hill. And uh, the Army of the Potomac is kind of on top of this hill and Robert E. Lee has to try to knock them off. So that's what the battle is. Rules are not very complex. Like I said, I read them over. They have some pretty interesting activations. Um, I don't know that I'm going to go ahead and talk about that a lot in this. I, this is not a, a review. The, the other thing I think is very interesting, and I'll show you here. If you look there at the counters, the counters have multiple steps. And they're going to be stacked under the face counters. And then as they're reduced, uh, they'll have less and less steps. So, it, so when a unit takes a, a step loss in combat it re will remove one of those counters first. It'll go from five steps to say four. Um, and then when a, when a unit has more than two steps, it's represented by stacking step counters beneath the ID counter, as you can see. There's gonna be five counters under that five step unit. So kind of interesting, but the rules are very simple. Uh, we'll go ahead, I'm gonna take the counters and put them aside. There is, is basically, in essence, one counter sheet. It's two half sheets together. Here I'm going to show you the uh, player aid. Pretty simple. You've got your combat results table. You've got some reminders about modifiers. The phase sequence of play. Down here is your terrain effect charts. And then you have your sharpshooters table, which is, which is kind of cool. There are units that are, uh, that are sharpshooters. So let's go ahead and take a look at the map. Uh, the map is actually really nice. It's basically an eight and a half by, or 11 by 17 uh, paper map. And it's very nice. The counters are fairly big. Uh, they're clearly identified. They actually put where the commanders start uh, based on scenarios. Water is very clear. This is a very simplified map. Um, one of the other things in the history of these battles, 
Robert E. Lee was a new general, obviously, and, and it wasn't necessarily his plans that failed early on or didn't necessarily realize their full potential. It was mainly because he, he hadn't learned to coordinate his generals and their movements as, as well as he would have liked. I think his new and inexperienced generals struggled with that. That is represented in the game. You can see the different commanders are here. Uh, kind of an interesting way that they deal with that. Counters are pretty simple. Once again, remember I mentioned all of those steps. So there you're going to stack these steps underneath the different units. Here at the top, you're going to get a look at some of the rebel, uh, some of the rebel units themselves. Not a lot of units. Look, guys, there's about 20 rebel units, give or take. Um, they do have a backside. You can see those very simple counters, simple and clear. Uh, nothing fancy. And then here's a look at the Union counters. And here you can see the Union units there on the top. And once again, their steps that are identified. You will, whoops, they really come out of, come out of the uh, sprue very easily. And I, I always think that's a good thing. You'll notice this gunboat. There are gunboats that are on the river, uh, which is pretty interesting. So simple, a simple game that has a lot of neat little elements. Like I said, the command coordination elements are pretty nifty. Um, it, it's a simple game that I think is going to be played very, fairly easily and that people will enjoy. I'm looking forward to it. Once again, I need to get it uh, clipped so I can go ahead and play it. But that's a very quick look at the newest release from Tiny Battle Publishing, Volume 5 in the Blood Before Richmond series, Malvern Hill, Battle of the Seven Days. And once again, this is designed by Tom Russell uh, and it is, a, is an American Civil War game. So there you go. There's my unbagging. Not very detailed or in-depth. There's only a few components. But I definitely want to get this one to the table solo, try to learn it, and then play it with Alexander. I think the game is advertised to take less than two hours. I was reading that and I can't remember where I read that. But, uh, you know, any game to me that replicates some of the elements of American Civil War fighting uh, in a neat way and can be played under two hours is always a good thing. So there you go. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, please like it and comment. If you enjoy the channel, please subscribe. And you can visit our website at theplayersaid.com to view these types of videos as well as written reviews, strategy articles, action points, um, etc. So uh, thanks for watching. I've been Grant for the Player's Aid.